Hello guys, this is Vidas and Usra and this is episode number one of our new show Ask Vidas and Usra. We're very excited and we're walking uh, through the woods now in the morning and you can hear the birds singing, right? How are you feeling today, Usha? I'm fine. What so, about you? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I'm quite ready to answer people's questions. Uh, we received four questions so far and we have uh, four episodes lined up for you. And today we're going to uh, basically answer the first question that came to us and it was written by Jan. Um, and it was a wonderful question I'm, I'm trying to read now. And she writes uh, things about playing with a steady tempo, you know. Um, here is, how can I keep a steady tempo? That's her question and I, I will explain. Um, she writes, my teacher tells me every time I have a lesson, in every piece that I play, that I am playing with multiple tempos. I think that I'm playing with a steady beat, but when I test with the metronome, I am all over the place. I'm stuck as to how to fix this problem. At present, I do some of my practice with a metronome. And she writes that she's not a beginner, and that's, of course, frustrating and disheartening. So, Osha, do you think that this kind of problem is common among organists? Yes, I think uh, this problem is common among all musicians, not only organists, because I think even pianists or violinists can have the same problem. That's true. Uh, do you remember the time when you had this problem? Because it was probably a very long time ago. Yes, I remember that time when I was working on the C minor, Bach C minor prelude and fugue. BWV 546. Yes, I had that problem in the prelude. Mm -hmm. And especially in that episode uh, when the, um, I think, when eight the, notes yes. changed with the triplets. Right? Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. So what helped you that moment to solve this problem? No, I don't remember exactly, but 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 in general, I thought a lot about it because then later in life I returned to that piece. I just could not understand how I could play it so badly at that time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so unrhythmically. Yeah, uh, and our professor, we were studying at the same prof uh, by the same professor, Leopoldus Degrees, I think, at the time, and. Um, he was very mad actually oh, because yes. of this uh, spot episode and uh, I, I think he just kept shouting at me and I, I think I was so scared of him that I could not do you know to play it correctly so yeah never shout at your students that's number rule number one even if you are frustrated with your students <laughs> you should not shout at them right so, but of course, the, back to the question. Imagine, imagine Jan is having uh, the same thing, right? You, uh, like you had back uh, maybe some 20 years ago when you first started playing uh, the organ, or, um, or other people around the world also facing the same problem. So, what do you think, Osha, uh, keeping the steady tempo might be possible if a person plays with the metronome all the time. Well, you know, I think the metronome is 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 not for. Actually, metronome is only you know to check your tempo, what what tempo it should be, but it's not a good tool to practice with it all the time because mm -hmm. finally, when you will have to perform this piece you know, during exam or during a recital, you will not have a metronome. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, metronome doesn't, doesn't let you to show the structure of a piece, actually. Because 
keeping the steady tempo is not, you know, the only thing you have to do in the piece, because there are other like structural moments, you know, cadences, where you might, you know, have to slow down a little bit, you know, or fasten up a little bit just, you know, to to show the structure of the piece. I mean, to play like a human being, not like a robot. And that, I think, why a metronome is not such a great idea, you know, to practice with it all the time. Maybe, you know, time after time you can do it, but, but not all the time. And I don't think that metronome will, you know, solve this problem of playing in a, you know, steady tempo. Hey, do you remember we have in Undamare studio this, uh, this wonderful lady who is practicing with us um, for six years now, I think, just from the beginning. And she has the goal to master all the eight little preludes and fugues, right? And she, she has mastered, I think, five or six of them by now. Just a couple of them left, right? And she is really determined, but one of her major problems is really keeping the steady tempo in pieces, right? So, remember what we suggested to her, too. I think uh, to count out loud and subdivide the beats. Uh, if, if um, imagine she, she plays the piece in 4-4 four, four meter, so I think we said uh, counting out loud those four beats, four quarter notes, and doing this loudly, you know, counting out loud, because uh, as Jan probably experiences, uh, because uh, a lot of people think they are playing in a steady tempo and even counting, counting, um, you know, naturally and evenly, but it appears that when they listen to the recording, it's not true, right? Or when somebody else is listening from the side. So the only possible way that I found is really to force yourself to count out loud steadily. Would you agree, Osha? Yes, it's very helpful. But you have to do it loudly, I mean, or you know, to do it mechanically, with, like, like with your mouth, with your tongue, you know, just subdivide. For example, 16th, feel them. Because otherwise, you know, if you will do it only in your head, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. It will not work. Right, because you you think you you are counting uh, steadily inside of you, right, in the, your mind. But your music can be all over the place. Well, that's what I did when I learned, you know, the Jean's Guillou piece. Um, Icarus. Mm. I subdivided all the time, you know, the, the smallest values with my tongue. It actually really helped because it's it's a tricky piece, you know, to play it technically and to play it rhythmically correctly, you know, in a very fast tempo. So that's what I did, you know, at the beginning while learning that piece, I would just subdivide all the time. And even during my performance, you know, as a final stage, sometimes I would subdivide at least some spots. Just to, to keep it, you know, in a good tempo and rhythmically correctly. Uh -huh. So then probably the, the shortcut to this would be to re for Jan and others to, to master the piece, the piece at the level that she could really play fluently in order to concentrate on the counting, right? Sure, because another problem why the tempo can change, it might be, you know, that although, well, she is not a beginner, yes, uh, at the keyboard, but 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 still, you know, all of us have some harder spots in the piece and some easier spots. And sometimes, you know, when you get to the harder spot, you start to slow down, to slow down. But when you know you are playing an easy place, let's say where the sequences uh, are going all the time, you sort of starting to go faster and faster because it's easier. It's, it's easier, you know, so you really need to make sure that places where you slow down are not, you know, technically harder than other places. Right, right. All of the episodes in your piece, in your mind, should be of, you know, equal, uh, equal level of uh, 
of complexity, right? Although there some be some episodes might have uh, 16 notes or even 30 second notes or triplets or sy syncopation, right? But you have to master those episodes so well that they should be as easy as playing quarter notes, let's say, or half notes in other spots, right? So wonderful, I think um, Jan can now try this technique and other people can try this technique. By the way, um, Jan is our total organist student and uh, really um, tries to perfect her organ playing through our uh, you know, study programs and uh, coaching training materials, which also a lot of people have found tremendously valuable. And right now we have this 30-day uh, uh, trial period where you can really subscribe for free and try out all the material with, uh, without any payment for uh, 30 days, for one month. And if you like it, you can decide to keep subscribing. Uh, and if you decide it's not for you, you can cancel before the month ends. So, so I think we will go on with our day-to-day -day, uh, uh, things right now. Uh, as we are walking through the woods, I think the birds are singing quite loud and mosquitoes, mosquitoes are biting <laughs> in my legs now because I'm with wearing shorts and my, my feet are basically uncovered. And it's a really beautiful view, very green, wonderful morning. Uh, Osha, what piece will you be practicing today, by the way? I think I finally will learn the piece d'org. Piece d'org, right? Yes. It's, it's a fantastic piece. Do you need the, my, um, my fingerings that I pre I'm preparing for this? I think it will be helpful. Uh, and pedalings, right? Yes, especially nice that, you know, I don't have to write them down myself. Right, right. Sometimes people don't like to write uh, fingerings because it's a lot of work to do this. But if somebody can provide the fingerings and pedalings for you, that saves maybe maybe 30 hours of work for some people, right? Yes. Wonderful. So. So guys, this was Vidas and Oshra uh, talking to you from the woods of the uh, vicinity of Vilnius, Lithuania. And uh, if you like this episode um, and would like to ask us more questions, all right, related to any area of organ playing, basically, we'd like to help you to achieve your dreams. So uh, click, click on the um, comment section of this post and um, send us your question but make sure we find this question because a lot of comments we get is not related to our podcast right but basically to anything else so if you want us to find and answer your questions uh, directly on this uh, ask vidas and osha podcast right so make sure you include the hashtag hashtag uh, ask vidas and osha and post it uh, on the comment section of this blog. So thank you so much guys. This is Vidas and Osha. And uh, I hope you will have a tremendous success in your practice today. Bye.